All right, Shalom, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Salutations to Yaakim across the world, pushing this word in truth and in sincerity and with charity. And uh, this is going to be a quick lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Shai. And it's, uh, it's really land back in um, these, uh, let's see, the brother Mawatazak, the elder Mawatazak, and. Uh, in the LA camp, let me pull it up real quick. It's a video he did. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> this video here. All right. And it's called, put it up to the camera. This, the camera focuses in. All right, and it's called, if you can see it, it's called Jake has all them weapons to fulfill prophecy of being destroyed. And that's the truth because he was lying back and off of, um, he was lying back and off of, you know, the elder Manatazak Ba down in South Carolina. And, um, you know, Jake is, Jake still has that spirit even after coming into this truth that your goddamn gun is going to save you, man. <laughs> Do you know how many weapons and, and artillery and different types of ways of violence that the Lord has bitten unto Esau, which has put him past you Edomites or you uh, you Israelites, because that is his blessing? Jake, you need to just sit your ass down somewhere and wait. We need to wait on the Lord. Now, Saul had a spirit of doing being self-willed himself, which is why what the prophet Samuel told him to wait for me until I arrive. And you can read about the story in the scriptures. All right, wait until I arrive. All right, and then, hold on one second. Wait until I arrive and then give sacrifice. But, you know, Saul being self-willed, all right, he uh, <laughs> he went ahead and did what he wanted to do because the people were against him. Now, in this stead, what? We're liking unto uh, uh, <laughs> being in a position of Saul, but what? We're waiting for the Lord instead, man. We're waiting for the Lord to bring forth his great sacrifice in Basra. We can't do anything outside of that. You niggas, your gun's not going to deliver you, man. Okay, it's carnality. The blessing of the Israelite is not carnality, it's the spirit. Okay, now let's see what happened to Saul when he was self-willed. And a lot of Israelites in his last day, in these last days, they're self-willed. All right, they want to get their weapons. They want to rise up against the government. That's why you have camps like Sakari, man. All right, that openly said they're black extremists man that's sakari that has they had they're not affiliated with us man all right so they openly said that we are black extremists that's what the the group sakari said now that is the spirit that is on a lot of these uh these camps out here nowadays man and not just these camps are people of the world because everybody feels what's coming uh, uh what's happening on the earth everybody's trying to get packed and loaded <laughs> you know, but we're not in those times, man. We don't have no power like that. That's not our blessing. And what's going to be the outcome of that? Death. The Lord's going to kill all you niggas, man. The Lord's going to use the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, the Caucasian man, because his blessing is a sword and war and armor and and and, and battle, all right, and violence and death. And he's going to bring. He's going to use him to bring it to you, Negroes, man. That think you got it now because you got a, a couple ARs and you got like a, a, a cabinet full of ammo, man. And you're teaching your sons and daughters how to do that's not your way and it's not gonna work. It's just setting you're setting yourself up. Really, the Lord is setting you up to be destroyed. Now, this is what happened to Saul being self-willed. He died. All right. Samuel told him what? That you shall rest you shall rest and go back to the spirit world, roughly paraphrasing, for being self-willed. And that's what we're trying to tell Jake. Stop being self-willed. We're waiting patiently on the Lord. Just as Saul was supposed to patiently wait for Samuel. All right, the Lord is going to rise up to the prey. This is uh, 1 Samuel 31, and then we're going to go somewhere else. Now, the Philistines fought against Israel, and the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain in Mount Gilbo. All right, like unto today, you niggas are going to try to go out against uh, Esau, <laughs> not knowing that the Lord is not with you, man. The Lord is with us being spiritual right now, man. The Lord is with us being, uh, uh, the Lord is with us patiently waiting to be saved. We're not going to save ourselves by a fucking gun, man. You niggas are retarded, man. 
you obviously don't fucking know what Esau has, man. Esau has some of the, the craziest things that the Lord has blessed him with, man. Stuff we've never even seen, man. So go ahead and go to try, try to fight your way out of this captivity, man. You're going to die here, man. Period, point blank. You're going to be destroyed because that's not the Lord. That's not the instructions the Lord gave us. Verse 2, and the Philistines follow hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, his son, and Abinadab, and Melchua, Saul's sons. And the battle went sore against Saul, and the archers hit him, and he was sore wounded of the archers. And eventually, later on, he died, man. Why? Being self-willed, trying to do his own thing <laughs> outside of the spirit of the Lord, right, which resulted in him uh, going into a war that he lost. All right, his test was to wait for for Samuel. Then you know maybe he would have won that that battle. But the Lord was against him because the Lord seen that he was doing his own thing. He wasn't waiting for the Lord. He wasn't waiting for things that pertain to the Spirit, which was the sacrifice that uh, Samuel was uh, coming to help with. He also what the uh, Samuel bid him to kill all the Edomites. He left some alive. See, don't listen. We're in a time period of what? Waiting for Yahweh Shem Shai. Let's get that. Until I rise up to the prey. <laughs> He's not going to beat Esau, man. Sit, Jake, sit your ass down somewhere, man. You know, but it, ultimately it's already too late because they know where you niggas live. They know, your, they know your identification and they know they've seen you on these videos with all these guns. So they're going to come right at you with guns in that time. They ain't going to come peaceably for you. <laughs> They're gonna come shit blazing because they see you, your dumb ass put all them videos up, man. With all them guns and stuff. Are you retarded? Niggas are slow, man. Bear with me one second. Let's get this. This is Zephaniah 3. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me. That's the point. We're waiting on the Lord. <laughs> we don't have any might. We don't have any power, man. Okay. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nation. So the Lord is doing something right now. The Lord has a plan right now. The Lord is moving stuff into place. And you are us as Israelites, he gave us the place to be spiritual. Okay? Wait. You see? Let me get another scripture real quick. I think it's always want to get a gun and shit. Man, you're not going to do nothing with the pea shooter, man. <laughs> this is uh, Exodus 14. Because we're now we're, we're uh, waiting for another exodus, another for the Lord to come get us once again. This last time, man. Exodus fourteen and fourteen and thirteen. And Moses said unto the people, because we're in the stead of Moses, the prophets are in the stead of Moses, starting with the apostles and elders on down. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. And see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today for the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, you shall see them again no more forever. All right. So what we're likening into, in, in, into uh, being in another uh, Egypt, which means bondage. You see. So now what the Lord is the same sentiment. Wait for the Lord. Wait upon him. Wait till he rises up to the prey. But niggas don't want to wait. Niggas want to go arm themselves and think they can fight Esau with his blessing. You niggas are crazy, man. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you. Is your gun going to fight for you? All right. Is your tactical skills going to fight for you? The Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. You see? We're not to do anything. We have no might. We have no power. Read the book of Isaiah. It calls it, the Lord calls us a worm, man. <laughs> We're defenseless. Go look at that caterpillar you see on this tree. See how soft is it? How soft it is? And, you know, 
fragile. <laughs> you see, that's us. Look at the worm on the ground when it rains. After they get up onto the surface. Fragile. The, the sun comes out, they burn away. They, it dries them up. They have no power. Their power is in what? The dirt going back into the ground, being in the soil. Our power is what? Staying in this truth and waiting patiently for the Lord and staying spiritual, man. I'm going to read this again and we'll go back. This is uh, Exodus 14, 14. The Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh shall fight for you and ye, you, shall hold your peace. <laughs> you see? We're not here to, uh, 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 we're not, uh, uh, um, we're a faith-based group like the, like the other camps call us, man. You niggas can go and try to fight the white man if you want to. Go ahead. That might be your lot. Just like uh, the Sakari, right? Niggas got whole ARs with drums on them at camp. Are you crazy, nigga? <laughs> you niggas are fucking, you not, you, the spirit's not dealing with you, man. You don't have no understanding. Zephaniah 3 and 8, therefore wait ye upon me. Here it is reiterated again. Save the Lord until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination, my determination is to gather the nations. Let's go into this word determination real quick. Determination is H4940. Judgment, justice, ordinance. So if you get out of the order of the Lord, of waiting for the Lord, you're getting out of the determination of the Lord. You're getting out of order. There's a whole ordinance. There's a whole... Uh, 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 um, there's a whole agenda from Yahweh Shemel Shai right now that he's doing. He's moving pieces into places. All right. He's moving us into place if we wait to be out of danger, Lord willing, to survive and be in different uh, uh, situations where we make it. But niggas want to go and rush the prophecy. <laughs> you see, niggas want to get violent and get carnal. Let me get a scripture real quick, man. This is Romans shows you niggas don't read the scriptures. And if they do, they have no understanding. And they don't understand the times we're living in. A lot of these camps that woke up and a lot of our people are carnally minded. They think a gun, the gun is going to save them. They think a war, a race war with Esau is going to get us out of this position that we're in as a nation. No, it's not. This is Romans 8. Let's see here. Romans chapter 8. Bear me one second. Romans chapter 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Your gun, all right, rising up against Esau. That's all fleshly and carnal. All right, goes this, this scripture goes into a lot of things that are, have to do with being in the flesh, doing stuff off, based off your flesh, of carnality. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things that are, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, things of the spirit. See these spirits, you see? <laughs> Satan. For to be carnally minded is death. All right? To be carnally minded is death. All right? So if you want to get your get a gun and arm yourselves, all right? Satan trying to hinder this and distract. <laughs> There's nobody around to make the car go off, but that just shows you, man. We're in a spiritual warfare. This is all spiritual. You see? Let's read it again. Romans 8. Romans 8 and 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death. So uh, ultimately the road that you're going to go down, if you go down that road of, you know, arming yourselves, taking up guns, collecting ammo, trying to go against the so-called white man, all right, with your own guns, which he builds, which he, which you have to go to him for. <laughs> Niggas are crazy, man. It's going to lead you down into a path of death, man. Okay. Let's read it again. Romans 8 and 7. Because the carnal mind is imminent. It says, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
What does that mean? The Lord said that we should stay in the spirit. We should keep things spiritual. That is what's going to lead to life and peace, man. All right. And this whole trial that we're on is it's, it's, uh, helping us improve our patience and improve us staying in the spirit. That's the whole time. That's the whole point of this grace period. To learn how to utilize the spirit. All right. The wisdom, knowledge and understanding that the Lord has given us. All right. So that it may be the stability of our times. You see, because it's going to get worse out here. It's already getting bad. People are already on edge. All right. But are we going to remain in the spirit? That's the test. Are we going to remain in the spirit so that what? Wisdom and knowledge and discernment and discretion could come to us? That's the test. Now, let's go back to Zephaniah. Zephaniah 3 and 8. Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations. That's what the Lord is doing. He's putting a spark under the feet of these nations to come. Everybody, all these nations are rising up against each other. All the nations are ultimately um, isolating America and, and are about to rise up against America, man. The Lord is doing all this. It's, he, he, this is, he's the master orchestrator, man. He's orchestrating on something right now. And niggas want to get outside of the ordinance, man. To think they can defeat the so-called white man who the Lord set up. It says... Therefore, wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is, is to gather the nations. That I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation, even all my fierce anger. For all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy, man. You see? We're not supposed to be trusting in a goddamn gun, man. Let's get another scripture. Even King David said it. And he was one of the greatest warriors, man. <laughs> King David killed tens of thousands of men and knew that that would not save him out of his situation he was in. It would be all on Yahweh Bashem Shai getting him out of this situation. Let's grab this real quick. This is Psalms 44. This has been coming out a lot. Psalms 44 and 5. Through thee, who is it talking about? Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, will we push down our enemies? Not through your gun. <laughs> Not through your tactics that you so-called learned. Through thee will we push down our enemies. Through thy name, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, through thy name will we tread them under the rock, tread them under that rise up against us. You see, that's why the Lord said the, uh, the the name of the Lord is a strong tower, man. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Verse six, for I will not trust in my bow. Neither shall my sword save me. <laughs> All right, we're depending on miracles. We're depending on miraculous things to happen to us brothers in this truth to get us out of these situations we're about to go into. That's the only way. The gun ain't gonna help you. All right? Uh, trying to be nice to the so-called white man is not gonna help you. It's gonna be all up to what? Yeah, how about you, shy? But thou has saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. See? The Lord is gonna put these nations to shame. We don't gotta do nothing. The Lord has all these nations in the, in his crosshairs, man. And you read about the history of Israel. When the Lord wasn't dealing with Israel, they were put to flight by the other nations. They lost the wars. Which shows you all this, all your, all our salvation, us winning a battle, it, it, it is depending on Yahweh Bashem Yoshai's decision at the end of the day and what he thinks. It's not going to be up to us. We're a nation that's conquered. A higher power has to come back and help us. You niggas are crazy if you think you're going to shoot your way out of this captivity, man. It's not going to work. <laughs> you see? This nigga's blessing was the sword. Let me get this real quick. 
This is Genesis 27. And 38. And Esau is going to say his blessing. Why you can't beat him. Esau, or Genesis 27 and 38. And Esau said unto his father, Has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. That's why the so-called white man is in rulership. Job 9 and 24. It goes back to the blessing. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion, which is what Esau has right now. The so-called white man has the dominion on the earth right now. That's why his money is all over the face of the earth. That's why his face is on the money. That's why his uh, his doctrines, his ideologies, his ways of life have spread across the earth. He's been given this dominion. This is we're living in his blessing. And you niggas think you're gonna rise up, all right, to stop this man? You're not gonna ruin. You're not your 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 blessing is not that. You're not gonna defeat him in his blessing, nigga. <laughs> I gotta say it like that because these these. These men out here that are doing it, they're putting a that's not the right spirit you're giving uh showing to our people, man. It's gonna get them slaughtered. Genesis 27 and 40. And by thy sword shalt thou live and shall serve thy brother, and it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. Alright, and he's broken the yoke off off of he's broken our yoke off his neck. And has came into power has been loosed a little season according to the book of revelation 20 man we're living in a little season his blessing what the lord gave him right the fatness of the earth the dominion and he will be living by the sword in these last days so you niggas trying to rise up all right and not teach our people to get into a spiritual mindset to learn these scriptures all right and really understand what they're being they're a part of all right, we're not no militia, no black militia, Hebrew Israelite militia. We're not that. All right, we're spiritual and faith based. All right, and you niggas are teaching our people opposite, which is why what that sword, all right, that the Lord gave Esau is getting sharpened again. Why? So he can make a sore slaughter on you niggas. So you niggas, gun, you're not gonna shoot out shoot the so called white man. All right, when when that time comes, man. Ezekiel twenty one. And one, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem, and drop thy word toward the holy places, and prophesy against the land of Israel. And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee. The Lord is against you, niggas, that's not taking heed and following the scriptures with understanding now in these last days, man. Two thirds of our people, niggas that, uh, that are in this, uh, this thing of ours, that call themselves Israelites in these other camps, bringing guns to camp. Unfilm doing interviews and different documentaries where you take the enemy amongst you and you show him you shooting in the gun range. The Lord is against you, man. Lest you repent. It says, And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, and I will draw forth my sword out of his sheath. Who is the sword? Esau. You niggas arming up, getting all these guns, got all these guns on the fucking table. Teaching your daughter how to unload a gun blindfolded. Oh, that's not going to matter, man, when the Lord unleashed this man. Those weapons are not going to mean shit because you saw has way power, more powerful things than that, man. It says, verse 3, And say to the land of Israel, Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I am against thee, and I will draw forth my sword out of his sheath. And I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked. <clears throat> Seeing then that I will cut off from thee the righteous and the wicked, therefore shall my sword go forth out of his sheath against all flesh from the south to the north. That all flesh may know that I, the, the Lord, have drawn forth my sword out of his sheath, it shall not return any more. Sigh therefore, thou son of man. With the breaking of thy loins and with bitterness sigh before their eyes. We're trying to tell you niggas. 
What's coming for you? You think you're gonna fight the so-called women? You're gonna be you're being prepared and led to a path of slaughter, man. Read Zephaniah orders. I mean Zechariah 13 and 8. Two parts there and she'll be cut off and die on this side, man. It shall come to pass when they say unto thee, Wherefore sighs thou? Why art thou sighing? That thou shalt answer for the tidings, because it cometh. And every heart shall melt, and all hands shall be feeble, and every spirit shall faint, and all knees shall be weak as water. Behold, it cometh, and shall be brought to pass, saith the Lord. We're trying to tell you that this man is about to come down to destroy you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, man. Unless you repent, man. Unless you change and be reborn again, man. If not, let's keep reading. Verse 8, again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord. Say, A sword, a sword is sharpened, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. Okay? The so called white man is getting prepared, man, to come and get you Negroes, man, and Latinos, and so called Native Americans, man. So take up guns if you want. Now, it's not wicked to own a gun through this man's system, the correct way, the proper way. But the whole spirit is not to take a goddamn gun to camp or trust in your gun to get you out of this captivity before this place is nuked to all hell, man. That's the whole sentiment. You should know a little piece of metal that shoots out other pieces of metal. It's not going to get you into a chariot. It's not going to get you out of being uh, uh, out of starving. <laughs> right. Ultimately, it's not going to save you, which is why King David said, I will not trust in my boat or my sword. I'm not saying he didn't have one at that time. He definitely had a sword on him. He was a warrior. But did he trust in that? To defeat his enemies? No, he trusted in the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shai, to defeat his enemies. And that's what happened, man. Otherwise, Ezekiel 28 and 21 and 9, son of man prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord, say, A sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sword slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son as every tree. And he have given it to be furbished that it may be handled. This sword is sharpened and is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. So the Lord is going to give Esau the charge to destroy you niggas in these last days, man. He's going to run in your house. All you niggas uh, have these videos with guns, standing out on the highways and byways with guns. You see? All our people that think a gun and machine and uh, ARs and all the bootleg tactics they've learned. It's going to deliver them. They're going to be slaughtered in these last days, man. You see? Verse 12. Let's see. The Lord says it right here. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword shall be upon my people. Lord is going to be, this man is going to be destroying you niggas, man. Even destroying them. Let me get that real quick. Niggas are done, man. Stop. That's not the right vibration to push to our people, man. Let's get this real quick. This is 2nd Ezra 16 and 71. They shall be like madmen. This is what Esau is going to come down in the spirit of madmen. They shall be like madmen, sparing none. This is that sword the Lord has furbished, the so called white men, to do what? To make a great slaughter. Second Ezra 16, Ezra saw this. Second Ezra 16 and 71. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. That's you, Israelites, ultimately. You see? More so if you're in the truth. That's why Sakari, you're putting out the wrong um, vibration. <laughs> you know, but that's prophecy, man. Everybody's back in their lot. All right, Ezekiel 21 and 12. Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. 
What should be upon you, uh, the Lord's people? Spoiling the spoiling and destroying of them. Like it's we just read in Second Ezra sixteen. Cry and cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon all the princes of Israel. Terrors by reason of the sword it shall be upon my people. Smite therefore upon thy thigh, because it is a trial. And what if the sword contemneth even the rod? It shall be no more, saith the Lord power. You see? Verse 15. I have set the point of the sword against all their gates. This is Esau. The Lord is going to command him what? He's going to use them to come against you Negroes. He's going to be all through the hood killing you niggas, man. You see? And the wicked of our people. You women too. <laughs> all right? So-called black woman, so-called Native American woman, the so-called... Latino woman The Lord is going to use Esau to get you too I have set Ezekiel 21 and 15 I have set the point of the sword against all their gates That their heart may faint So the Lord is going to purposely bring Esau on you niggas Because you hard hit it And their ruins be multiplied Ah it is made bright It is wrapped up for the slaughter This is the Lord talking Wow. Go thee one way or other, either on the right hand or on the left, whithersoever thy face is set. I will also smite mine hands together, and I will cause my fury to rest. I, the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, have said it, man. And that is the prophecy concerning Esau coming down on you, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, in these last days, with that gun, with different ways of, of killing you, with killing instruments, man. Okay, that's what the Lord's preparing right now. Niggas still want to arm themselves. You're not gonna outarm. You're not gonna uh, outarm yourselves against a so-called white man, man. There's no, it's no existing arms race between an uh, Israelite and an Edomite. It doesn't exist. It's, it's unfair. It's already unmatched. But niggas that are carnal, <laughs> they don't understand these things, man. So I don't want to make this too long. Lord willing, that was edifying. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahasham. Yahweh Shai, Baha Shum, Kodash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, and salutations to all you Akim across the world pushing this word in truth and in sincerity and maturity. Shalom and a Baba Ball.